Hey everybody, I'm Joshua. And I'm Caleb. We're brothers. Yes, sir. Guys, we talk about a lot of topics, and let's be honest, they're not the fun, happy topics <laughs> all the time. They're the kind of topics that you sit down with your school teacher and they say, okay, today we're going to do geometry. And you don't like geometry. <laughs> geometry. So I'm not going to lie, when I see an email come in from my brother and there is a uh, <clears throat> little template for what we're going to talk about, I may place small wagers on which one of these topics is going to offend you the most. Yeah. Because I know That's true. it will. <laughs> and if I had to choose an all-time winner, it'd probably be this one. Yes, I finally win. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Because we're talking about apostasy today. Most of you don't even know what that word is. I don't either. You don't have to see your doctor over it. It's something different. Now, just to warn you guys ahead of time, if you give me a thumbs down or send me a negative message, it just encourages me. I actually like that. If you don't want to fuel the fire, like give smiley thumbs up, like the little oh, emoji with the tongue at the side. Me. could be like, oh, <laughs> I didn't do my job. Now, we know the church as an institution today is currently uh, struggling due to COVID restrictions placed on it. Uh, people can't gather the way they used to. Um, you're being segregated. You have to wear masks. And have you ever sung in a mask? It doesn't work so good. And so you've been separated from this spiritual covering that is your church for a while. And then when you come back, because the churches were closed, you're back in this spiritual covering. Something feels different, doesn't it? You can either feel the value of that congregation you're in, or you may feel something's off, that there's a deception rampant. Um, the Bible talks about apostasy coming into church, false doctrines and all these things. And this is nothing new. It's been around in church since the beginning of time. Um, but the Bible warned toward the end, it would be escalating. There would be more and more of these things, uh, false teachers coming in place. Something escalating over thousands of years. That doesn't seem fun. <laughs> um, now, to be clear from the start, we've talked before that the church as an institution is not the church. The building you gather in is not the church. We are the church. So you can gather together in homes and, and in groups and in the market square and all that. And, and you can have church. You can praise and worship God. But we're discussing the church as an institution here. Um, Paul warned about false doctrines in 2 Timothy 4 through 4 that were being preached. But we want to talk about this great uh, falling away that he talks about coming in 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 3. In 2 Thessalonians, he says, Now, brethren, concerning yeah. the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask mm. you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, mm. either by spirit or by word or by letter, as is from <clears throat> us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away, the apostasy, comes first. So then he talks about the Antichrist being revealed the Holy, when the Holy Spirit removes from the earth. But it's very interesting. In verse 7, he says, the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. So he's saying this apostasy was already on the earth in his time. And so why does he link this two together, Josh? The Antichrist, the lawlessness, and apostasy. They're both bad. Verse 9 says, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth, they might be saved. The love of the truth, we'll get back to that. It's key to unlocking this mystery. Now, if you're like me and you're still wondering the exact word of apostasy, its definition, and you're just nodding your head and smiling, yes. I got you covered. Me, An apostasy is the abandonment or renunciation of religious or political belief. Okay. Well, apostasy. We, we've talked before about the seven churches in Revelation, Revelation 2 and 3. And uh, Yeshua mentions a lot of different false doctrines in that church, and we see them in our churches today. So we want to go through um, not denominations, but certain doctrines that are being preached today that are apostate. Uh, you may feel like you're being singled out, but we you're just want to go the first one, legalism. Josh, my favorite. You love legalism? No. In fact, when I say my favorite, <laughs> I mean my exact opposite favorite. If you didn't know already, I'm not one to be put in a box. I'm kind of gigantic and That's a little right. sassy. So legalism is a workspace system. Uh, the Sadducees and Pharisees in Jesus' time, they were consumed with that spirit of legalism. There are certain denominations that are bent toward that. Um, but it's kind of sad, Josh, we've seen even legalism pop up in you know, the more Messianic Jewish churches because uh, believing Jews don't feel Jewish enough. They're drawn back to the law and that they were just justified from. So they try to reorient themselves according to the law. And there's nothing bad with, you know, keeping Sabbath uh, and the feasts 
and kosher, but they're trying to find that justification once again, and, and then they become judgmental of those who don't follow it. That's the biggest ploy and key to legalism, is yeah. that it's not about following the rules being wrong, That's quote right. unquote. Mm. It's about the fact that you're trying to justify yourself and others by those rules. That's where it's wrong. The next one we see. Was it? Money worship. Ah, the love of mammon. Oh, mammon. It's in churches everywhere. Uh, we've talked about this extensively. Uh, different prosperity movements. Um, Jesus dealt with this. He decried the money changers in the temple. They made worship into a business. And even now out of fear, uh, many church institutions uh, that have to keep their doors open to pay these massive bills have resorted to methods of emotion and programming to get control, to try to get you to give to them. Uh, they teach false doctrines of tithe and all these things that aren't biblical we've spoken about before. Summary for all of y'all. Money ain't bad, loving it is. That's true. Okay, next one, Josh. Next one we're dealing with here is free grace. Oh, now, yeah. guys, free grace is something that is not only very prevalent today, but it's also very, very sneaky because it's mm. coupled with this idea and message that you mm. are free in Jesus Christ. Mm. He loves you. He sets you free. So if you're doing wrong, don't you worry. If you're sinning and you like that, don't worry about it. You're covered. Grace is... You're covers covered. all sin. You got it covered. I mean, this is ancient antimonianism. I mean, this was around for hundreds of years. And you see that, Josh, this, this free grace movement uh, even branched off from Calvinism. You are chosen. Nothing uh, you can do. Nothing you can do to be separated from that. So you can kind of dabble in the things of the world. You're going to be okay. <laughs> Compromise. Oh, compromise is That's big. big the Nicolaitan boy. doctrines. This uh, Jesus did not like these compromising churches that tried to adapt to the culture of the day. That tried to change the way that they worship uh, to adapt the sins and the different things that they didn't want to reject from the world. They love the world too much. In case you think you haven't heard of this, you really have, because a lot yeah. of churches deal with this today. We use really great marketing for it by saying that we just can't be stuck in the ways that haven't worked before. Yeah. We can't just have church like they did back when your parents were there because today's kids are different. They're facing yeah. different things. They need to hear something different. And so we begin mm -hmm. to mold our services towards the people yeah. as opposed to the message. That's we right. alter the time lengths. We alter the types, the way mm. we speak, the way we dress. Mm. None of those things in themselves are bad. It's not bad to have a short service, not bad to have yeah. a long service, not bad to wear jeans, not mm. bad to wear this. What's bad is if you're doing these things Mm. in an attempt to use that to reach people as opposed to the message of Jesus. So how about the kingdom is now, this kind of kingdom doctrine that's going around with, with preterism, with post-millennialists, with the kingdom now. The SAT um, words again. Yeah, they're the SAT words, but to cut it short, people are saying that all prophecy was fulfilled by the year 70 AD. Now, forget all that stuff in Revelation Daniel. It's fulfilled, you know, symbolically or, you know, metaphorically in these events. And we're living in the kingdom age, Josh. Isn't it great? I mean, everything's so great. We're good. living in the kingdom now. This feels just uh, like heaven. Forget about raptures. Forget about judgment. I mean, you know, then they get into things like, you know, you need, you know, to, to worship and praise God, which is good and prayer 24 hours a day, because the more you turn this kingdom into utopia, then Yeshua is finally going to return. And I think the great deception of all this is it's, it's linked to replacement theology, Josh. Mm. It's because if the kingdom is now, then you have to be the rulers of the kingdom. You have to be the chosen. That means you're you're for Jewish people. It replaces the Jewish people as being God's chosen. And the church takes the place of where the Jews used to be because you don't need all that Jewishy stuff in prophecy. So they have to find a way to fulfill it. I like that term. Out of all the big words you use, the Jewishy stuff. My new favorite <laughs> thing for him. Really, really spot on. Uh, lukewarmness, a.k.a. the dead church, a.k.a. Oh, a. the vomiter, a.k.a. The, the vomited, being vomited. This church saw the extremes on, on the right and left side. They didn't want to be uh, those crazy churches or the dead church, so they, they kind of found themselves in the middle. They denied the Holy Spirit uh, from manifesting the gifts of the Holy Spirit, doing anything crazy because they couldn't control it. And so when people were in that church, they, they were dead inside. Uh, that natural spiritual yearning in you because you are a part spiritual being that looks for the supernatural they looked out in the world for it and they found their supernatural experiences uh with things that were um not of god okay, like new age ever heard uh, statements occultism. like this in church where they said oh we believe in these things yeah. but we don't talk about them because that's controversial and not the point anytime you mm. shy away from the truth 
because you don't want to get caught up in quote unquote controversy, you don't want to stand for it, you might be in a lukewarm bath that's going to yeah. get spit out. And so that seeking of, of the supernatural led to this next church, Josh, the False Prophets New Mysteries Church. So uh, this church, you know, the Jezebels and Ahabs have these false prophets that teaches the new mysteries, new ways of God. They allow this sexual immorality adapting to the culture of the day, the perversion and uh, lascivious teachings. And, and people have been confused. Uh, I've read in the comments before, you know, what is the spirit of Jezebel listed in Revelation? Is that like the reincarnated spirit of, of Jezebel? Is I hope that not. That'd the be spirit terrible. of Jezebel possessing someone? No, this is when a, a false teacher, someone who knows they're being used by the enemy, allows this same spirit that uh, was used by Jezebel and Ahab to deceive people, to draw people away from God, to function under idolatry uh, with the New Age, with the occult and all these things. And, and Jezebel's clearly dead. She's in Hades right now. Um, but that spirit is still prevalent in the church today. This all sounds terrifying. Let me be clear. If you looked in your, the back of your uh, Sunday morning pamphlet and you saw that you were in, <clears throat> let me go back to the title of this, the False Prophet Church, you may want to just go ahead and find another institution. But there's a lot of ways people handle this. And if you look yeah. in the Bible, there was one tough dude that handled it in a specific way. Who was he? It was Elijah. And what did oh, he do? Yeah, he ran. And let me just be really quick to catch you up. He ran. Right? He called down fire from heaven yeah. that consumed an altar, yeah. that consumed false prophets. Yeah. This is only after those pro false prophets tried all day to get their altar lit, right. cutting themselves, everything else like that. And after he, after he called down fire and then stabbed the rest of them, <laughs> so now hundreds of people are dead, all in the behest of God. Yeah. Jezebel says, find him and kill him, and he runs for his life, and he hides under wow. a tree, and he says, God, kill me because I'm not even as cool as my dads and the people that came no. before me. Now, oh Lord, take away my life. I am no better than my father's. Then he went to the desert to Mount Horeb and he, and he said, Lord, this is it. I'm the last of your prophets. I'm the only one who stands for you. Elijah. What are you doing here, Elijah? I have been zealous for the Lord God of hosts, but the Israelites have forsaken your covenant. They have slain your prophets by the sword. And I, only I, am left. Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. And God, for the first time in history, decided he was going to speak to him in a different way. Now, before this happened, we see that the winds come. The Bible says God wasn't in it, right? Yeah. that the earth shook and God wasn't in it. We saw fire come. All of these ways that up until this point in history, man had heard right. from God through and it wasn't in it. I'm here, Elijah. And he kneeled down and he pulled his little hoodie down. I call it a hoodie, whatever they called it back then. And it said for the first time in the Bible that God spoke to him in a still small voice. And he said something very important. Yes. Because this is how we feel on a daily basis when we get in the, we, we feel we're alone. Yeah. We feel nobody else is struggling like mm. this. We feel nobody else is, is on this journey mm. by themselves. He said, not only you're not alone, but I reserve 7,000 mm. who haven't bowed to Baal. That's right. He said, now pull up that dress of yours, shove <laughs> it in the front of your belt, and go run and warn the people. So back to the key to fighting all this apostasy. So Elijah fought apostasy. How do you recognize apostasy? How do you stop it from coming into church? Uh, we mentioned the love of the truth. Uh, they did not have the love of the truth. Well, who is the truth? John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So God is the truth. Yeshua is the truth. And we know the Shema, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Akkad, Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the key to it. You forgot to love God. You start <laughs> loving everything else. The idols and the idolatry, all those things. And if you return back to your first love, the love of God, there goes apostasy. There goes the false teaching. There goes the deception. It's all gone. Don't you love that? You're sitting there, okay, I, I think I got most of this equation right. Okay, <laughs> seven times 86, right? And I carried the one. <laughs> oh, I forgot to love God. 
Guys, if you think that love isn't as powerful as we say it is and as yeah. the Bible says it is, have you ever punched somebody in the face that loved you? <laughs> Anybody ever come up and be like, you know what? You're handsome. You're an amazing person. I, I just wanted to tell you that you're the night. Ha ha! Pa! <laughs> you know, because love is like this infectious, strong, That's contagious right. thing that when it comes at you, it disarms you. We're always so looking at these problems. We say we either got to run and fight, uh, hide, or we got to fight them. But he says, no, love. Yeah. Take a step back. Most of the time when I was in school and I had messed up on an equation in math that was really, really long, I got 99% of it right. You know where I messed up? I messed up yeah. on 2 plus 2 at the very beginning. Go back. 2 plus 2 Go to in your walk with the Father yeah. is the love of God. So take a step back. And realize my focus has been in the wrong place and put your love back on the Father and all the things of this earth will go strangely dim like the song says. That's because right. that's where your focus is now and it'll outshine everything so else. guys, we love you. We're not trying to attack you, your pastors or your churches or things like that. If there's a problem in your church, it's us. It's because we chose that we wanted the world. The church was giving us what we wanted. Uh, we voted with our dollars, with our attendance, with our sense. And so the only reason the church is how it is today is because our hearts weren't right. Once we change our hearts, it'll follow in the institution of the church and we can worship God freely in spirit and in truth. And just like I said at the beginning of the show, if you want to disarm him, put smiley face emojis and thumbs up. It Don't just, do it. it confuses him that. and he won't offend you anymore. <laughs> You're welcome. We love you guys. <laughs>